welcome family welcome 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 thank you for coming through i see i have six people in i'm very excited to see that um you guys this is uh um, this has been long suffering for me. I'm sorry. I said this was going to happen a couple of days ago, but um, it didn't. So my apologies for that. And um, so I want to welcome everyone. Those of you that are subscribed to the channel, welcome family. <laughs> and those of you that are not subscribed, please come through, subscribe, hit the like button while you guys are coming in, share the video on your social medias. Um, and to my new subscribers, you're welcome. Thank you. Um, I see uh, I have some new subscribers. So thank you for that. I'm very excited to be here today. As I stated, you know, um, on the last discussion, I'm really excited about my findings. Um, I don't know if you guys have ever heard of my living DNA. Well, living DNA, I don't think it's called my living DNA. These are my living DNA <laughs> results, but the company is called Living DNA. I'm not getting paid for this, guys. So please uh, just just know that anytime I find something that I think um, you guys would be interested in or anyone would be interested in or just want to share my news, I'm just excited about it. You know, went through Ancestry, went through 23andMe. I know that those are great um, DNA sites and there are so many things, you know, like, you know, with Ancestry, they just uh, had this new thing where, you know, I shared with you guys last time where we were, were able to actually know what side of you know, be it our father or our mother that our matches are coming from. Well, guess what? <laughs> you know, you know, and also 23 and me were also able to give people a couple of tribes based on what they are able to do. But man, living DNA, living DNA. I'm not even gonna, I'm not even gonna lie to you. I, I've stumbled across this watching somebody's video and they were, um, they pretty, they have a pretty large channel. And he was talking about finding this and, and, how, and then he showed his, his tribes. It was like, he had like over 10, I'm telling you over 10, they were able to, to do what Ancestry and 23andMe are not doing yet. I'm not going to say they're not going to do it. Um, and you know, with African Ancestry, you can get your tribes. You can, they can tell you who you're connected to if you're a woman based on your matcher. And of course, if you're, if you're a man, you could get both. Um, I'm excited to tell you guys that um, this right here has been um, a very good experience. I'm learning so much with this. This genetics thing, I can't let go of it because, to be honest with you, um, I, I've been caught up for a very long time on a couple of things. Um, the difference between race, ethnicity, and nationality. That that was a question that I, I had a lot. Of, I, I've stumbled across this problem. And I think most of us, though, those of us that are, you know, descendants of the transatlantic trade, slave trade or any slave trade that has lost, you know, that connection. Yeah, it can get a little confusing. Understanding the difference between race, ethnicity and nationality, you know, um, Understanding that there is a difference. And for those people that do know their race, their ethnicity and nationality, and sometimes understand the difference between the two, let's say somebody that's coming from China that lives here in America, they understand that's if they become American, that's just their nationality. But, you know, their race is what people lump them in as, or they're lumped in based on the way they look and their ethnicity they understand is their culture. Those of us that are, you know, descendants again of the transatlantic slave trade, we do not, unless, not going to say everybody, most people do. I'm just going to speak for myself and those of us that are like me have a very, um, you know, we understand it. We understand the difference and then we could, we could Google and go on a Wikipedia and figure out the differences, but it's really, it's not something that we grasp. You know, basically, um, it's not something that we grasp easily. Um, now, the cultural aspect of it, we all have our cultures. We grow up in different parts. And let's say if you're in America, different parts of the country. If you're from the islands, different parts, you know, of the world, you know, we all have that. But to understand there is a difference between race, ethnicity, and nationality, and to really understand how other people are moving in this world, knowing this and 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 um, grasping the difference, um, I'm I'm really starting to wrap my head around that and and understanding that all you know all due respect to how we feel about how others treat us and deal with us. Um, this plays a big factor, you know, certain people are on top of 
you know, the differences between race, ethnicity, and nationality. And some of us, we're just not because it's not something that we've ever had to, um, you know, or had the option to uh, even understand or know. Well, that being said, I'm not going to get into that as much, but there's always that. And then in finding out my tribes, <laughs> because that's what I'm here for, y'all. I'm here to talk about tribalism. I've gotten a little tribal this week. And um, I never thought I was going to get this close. And, and now that I'm sitting back looking at all these things, I mean, with ancestry, being able to, I have 5,000 matches, being able to understand that these people, this side, of this, this group of matches come from my father's side and this group come from my mother's side and being able to connect and find out who my great, great, great grandparents were based on communicating with people and really trying to make strong connections. That's amazing. And then 23andMe, you know, the fact that, you know, they have this thing, they have all these um, great features, but then getting into living DNA, man, it just blew me away. And it's not that, it's funny because it's, it's strange because you're getting a little bit from every different, from each one and, and they're in competition. So uh, imagine if they were working together. I, I almost feel like this should be a part of our reparations. I feel like it should be a part of um, those of us that were displaced <laughs> and, and are interested. Let me not speak for everybody. Those of us that were displaced and are interested um, to, to getting back what was taken from us, a little bit of what was taken, a lot of what was taken from us was, you know, our understanding of who we are, um, our knowledge of our history, our knowledge of the people that we came from. Do you know that some people can actually go back 10, 20, 30 generations? That's amazing. Um, some people have that op option. Some Europeans, some people from China, some people from other places have the option to, to know who their great, 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 going back, you know, 20 great grandparents were. I mean, that was taken from us. And for um, a number of reasons, um, for whatever reason, and I, and I truly believe that it is something greater than any human on this earth can really put together, it's all starting to come back together. But it would be great <laughs> if, uh, you know, this would be a, a big a, a big package of reparations, not not just due from the Europeans, but from the African continent as well, because I feel like, hey, we all played a part in, in uh, making this mess. We should all play a part in putting it back together. Um, I was watching um, something today and uh, somebody mentioned that, you know, it was this Latina, Afro-Latina. I was on, I don't know why I go on Twitter. I try not to go on TikTok or Twitter. I don't know if it was on TikTok or Twitter. And she was tripping about African-Americans getting reparations in California because um, there's more Latinas there and they didn't have anything to do with the slave trade. Um, Spain and Portuguese, if you have a lot of Spain and Portuguese in you, yes, you do. Okay, so that's going off. <laughs> That was something that was in my head. But again, it goes back to race, ethnicity, and nationality. See, these people, certain people have a grasp of, um, of race. They have a grasp or they're connected based on ethnicity. And then there's people that are connected based on nationality. I'm really starting to get it now. I, I promise you, even there are African Americans that are so nation, like so nation connected. They're, it's all about nationality for them. It's not about race. It's not about the ethnicity. It's the fact that they have this pride of nation, meaning that they're, they're from this nation or from that nation. And they're proud of that. And they are, and I'm starting to realize that, um, this thing is not simple at all, and um, you know, and and it, it's I'm I'm not yet at the place where I'm I'm not choosing either, and I'm I'm at the point where I'm just like understanding that the world, um, and all the different ciphers in the world. When I say ciphers, I'm talking about the different peoples of the world. There is a choice being made, a unconscious or conscious choice being made about how do I see myself, where do I group myself, what. Prime, what is my primal position and, and who are my people? <laughs> it's either race, ethnicity, or nationality. And so for me, um, this is a lot of what I'm learning through DNA, a lot of what I'm learning through um, learning about other people and peoples <laughs> throughout the world. Very interesting stuff, stuff that, you know, 
I, I'm very privileged to say that for a very long time, um, I'm privileged to say that I know as much as I do now because for a very long time, I really did not know much about myself. So right now I'm feeling like it's like the best time to be alive because yeah, things are not great, but there are, there are some things unfolding. And if you are, if you're for it, if you're, if you want to take advantage of this, it's here for you. So let's dig in. Living DNA. <laughs> I'm excited to share this with you guys because those of you that are interested, you want to upload your DNA from Ancestry, from 23andMe into Living DNA. I think they have like a $25 fee, but what you're going to get back, and it all falls in line with what I have in my, my true ancestry. It all falls in line with what I have with uh, 23andMe. I'm excited because, uh, and, and Ancestry and any others that I have uh, wrestled down and tried to get information from, it's all starting to come back together. There's even things that came up that I never even thought of. So we're going to talk about that. I'm going to share that with you guys. But before I do that, let me give you an introduction to what it is that they're doing. Again, I'm never sponsored by anybody, y'all. <laughs> I don't know anything about these DNA companies. I don't reach out to them, asking them to sponsor me. But I'm very much interested in, uh, you know, tackling this race, ethnicity, and nationality thing that we're tackling. So. The African Ancestry panel launch. What that means is that we are launching 72 new genetic populations in Africa. That means that All right, guys, I apologize. I should have introduced this. This is basically Living DNA making an announcement that they are now giving Africans the option that a lot of these other, you know, DNA sites are not giving us yet. They have more, they have test tested more people and they're now able to let you know more tribal information about yourself. So I'm going to start from the beginning and um, let you hear it all and then we could get into my stuff. So today we started rolling out emails and updates for the African Ancestry panel launch. What that means is that we are launching 72 new genetic populations in Africa. That means that the percentages that you can get in Africa have increased from six, which is what we had before, to seven. And six is usually what most companies have. So this is, could you imagine from six to 70 something? Yo! 72. And that's being rolled out to everyone who has more than 5% African ancestry in their current ancestry results. Uh, this is a huge step forward for us. This is also hopefully a, a big step forward for genealogical researchers who are interested in learning more about where their African heritage comes from, uh, if it was in recent, uh, within the last 500 years or so. Um, one of the things that we find really exciting about this is it's more than five times the detail uh, for Africa than any test that's currently on the market. And we'll talk a little bit more about that in just a moment. This project has been in progress for about 11 months uh, before we've finally been able to release it. We've kept a tight lid on it up until that point. Um, but this research has been um, a big accomplishment for us. Some tears were shed this morning and we're very excited and very proud of what we've done. Um, while we've launched here with 72 new genetic population estimates in Africa, this is of course the first time we've done something like this and we'll be welcoming feedback and continuing to iterate on this product and these regions and the content involved as we continue to get customer feedback that will evolve over time. Um, just like with all of our other regions and population groups, anything that you receive an estimate on, you will have uh, historic information about images, geographical data, um, content about the languages spoken in those areas, um, and any history of different DNA that influenced those regions as well. Much like the European update, if you're familiar, I'll go back to the slide actually, you can self-trigger this update. As I mentioned before, if you have greater than 5% African ancestry in your current ancestry results, or if you test with us and know that you probably have at least 5% African ancestry, if you were to test with us today or upgrade today, um, then you will receive an update to be run on the new African panel, and you will get the option to update your results to that panel 
that all runs through your email. You can also just log directly into the portal. A pop-up will appear asking you if you'd like to do the update, which I hope you will. Um, a quick industry comparison. Um, so in terms of breaking down Africa into more regions, um, it is often a regions game. And I want to be a bit careful when saying regions because it's not 100% accurate when people are talking about what regions are. But what regions means to us in this context is regions on a map that we are able to divide, define population groups for. Um, so we may highlight areas across Africa that are both related in terms of DNA genetic signature, but the locations on the map aren't necessarily the same place, if that makes sense. Um, so they're really population groups might be a more accurate way of phrasing it. However, the industry tends to refer to these as regions. Um, which is why there's a bit of confusion there. But if you're thinking in your head, what does this actually mean? What it actually means is population groups. And then we're just showing you where those population groups were commonly found according to our research on a map. How does it work? If you're familiar with our European launch, great. If not, uh, well, if you are familiar, then go ahead and tune out for a moment. But if you're not familiar with how this works, I'm going to walk through it really quickly here. So let's say you have a uh, greater than 5% African ancestry. What happens is on our side, we flag you for an update by running you through that data query. And then once we flag you for an update, that's a fancy way of saying that we trigger an email that gets sent to you. Um, once you receive that email, there is a link that takes you to the portal. If for some reason you don't receive the email that think that you should get the update, you can just log directly into the portal. The email doesn't, um, isn't a blocker for you getting the update. So you can go directly into the portal. A pop-up appears, asks if you'd like to update. If you say yes, you'll get another email confirming that you've made that decision. And within 48 hours, you'll receive another email letting you know it's complete. Um, and then when you log into the portal next, you'll be able to view information about that update. We're also working on releasing the ability to download your results. Uh, right now, it gives you a list and you can screenshot it. However, we have PDF um, that you'll be able to download of your old results as well. Um, and that should be going live within the next day or so. Um, behind the scenes, what happens if you have African ancestry? Everyone in our entire database gets run on the world panel. That's where you always start. So if you test with us, if you upload and then decide to upgrade your ancestry test with us, then you'll be run on the world panel. The world panel has six African regions, just like our old Africa panel did. Um, but once we de detect you have more than 5% African ancestry, you will also get run on the African panel. And that gives you the 72 regional breakdown. Let's talk a little bit more about what the panel involves. This is the, it's a bit ugly, so you'll have to forgive it. This is what you actually see if you're working on drawing these map regions in our tools. Um, so on the left, you see what our map used to look like in terms of the six regions that we broke down into for Africa. I want to stop here to say this. When I looked at that map, I was thinking, wouldn't it be great if there were only uh, six regions? I mean, wouldn't it be great? Wouldn't it be such a unifying uh, moment for Africa to uh, to be to be this um, connected? Um, I know that a lot of people like leading and like leadership, and it would probably affect um, them being able to be have so many uh, leaders in different places. But man, it would be such a powerhouse. It's just so scattered right now. But that's just a, a side thought, y'all. Side thought. <laughs> And on the right, you can see that we had to use transparency because there are a lot of overlapping population groups that are found in similar areas. Uh, and we've got 72 regions here on the right. Here we have a list of all 72 regions that we're breaking down into. This is also available on our health center on the page that says what regions do you compare with? You can probably link that at the end. That'll help people if they'd like to view these again. Do you guys see all these regions? Ah! <laughs> I'm so excited. Um, and there are in total 72, which is really exciting. And they're all over Africa. You might be wondering, well, there's some light blue regions that look like they're not highlighted necessarily. 
That's correct. Um, and I want to talk about why that is. Because as you can see, back when we had six regions, it might be easy to compare these and say, wait, well, so you have less in those areas. And that's not exactly the case. Um, the reason that we have some blank areas on the map, um, one is due to what is in that region. So the climates are less inhabitable. They may be desert or jungle regions in some cases. In other cases, it has nothing to do with the climate or that's just one factor. It may also have to do um, with what's available in terms of data research that's been done in those areas. If there aren't a lot of DNA samples for us or not enough for us to create a confident reference panel against, then we wouldn't want to overestimate something that we don't actually know a lot about. So that is why we've decided to not show those areas that we're less confident about. Um, in other cases, there might be inaccessible or restricted data. So there are research studies that have been done in those areas, but we don't have access to them for whatever reason. That doesn't mean that we can't um, explore those areas in the future. What it means is that we may have to build our own panels from internal samples. And when I say an internal sample, I mean from users who decide to opt into our research project uh, through our portal um, and building our own research studies for those areas. Uh, we might also explore future partnerships where they may have done studies in those areas or may be interested in doing studies in those areas that would help us to build out those regions that we don't currently have highlighted. Um, in terms of the sources uh, for where we got this information, um, some of the studies that we are sharing here um, are the complex ancient genetic structure and cultural transitions in Southern Africa. Southern African populations, as well as genomic insights into the origin of farming in the ancient Near Eastern nature. There are more genetic research studies that we use than these, but these are a couple of the publicly available ones that we're sharing with you to let you know this is what we researched. We also used our own internal database samples. Like I mentioned before, if you opted into our research program and had grandparents that were born in similar areas within Africa, typically within a 50 kilometer area of each other, then we may have used that to help us build reference panels or infer information about different genetic populations within Africa. If you're interested in the science behind what we're doing, I like to leave the expertise to the experts. So I'm not going to talk too much in detail about the science because we're going to do a second webinar for people who are interested, if we get enough interest in it, with our research team who can talk in more detail um, much more knowledgeably about how we actually determined these regions, what kind of uh, research that we did, and how we drew things like the boundaries. How did we do that? What did we use to determine those things? Some of the questions we've gotten asked relatively often, not only for this panel, but for others. Um, one, how did we decide which regions to research? The way we decide which areas in Africa to research is through what's available in terms of publicly available studies, as well as what we have in our own database. Additionally, we look at our own expertise. And internally, one of our population geneticists had a PhD in African population genetics research. So this made sense for us to dive into. Um, as I mentioned, it took 11 months. So this is not a small undertaking. In terms of determining the boundaries for each region, one of the things that influences it, and it's multiple things that really help us determine this, um, is the location of the reference panel. So where this DNA originally came from that we're using to study these population groups and where they're indicated that they came from is what helps us also draw those boundaries. Additionally, we do research on the history of those population groups and those regions. Are there natural boundaries that are found? Are there anything else that we can infer through that historical research to help us draw those boundaries? And all of those things together are what help us to basically color in that map. How did you choose the names for each region? Again, this is often influenced by the data set and the research studies that were done. And when we don't get enough from that information, we also do historical research as well with our anthropologists. Um, what experts were consulted during this development? Like I mentioned, um, the project was run by a population geneticist with a PhD in African population genetics. And lastly, if you'd like to learn more about this research, if we get enough interest, we'd love to do a webinar um, for a Q&A to, to dive into this. I'm going to show you some examples uh, from the portal. These are mostly from today, so this is very exciting um, of us running these uh, results on some of our sample data. 
and getting some before and afters. Uh, this one here, this is the old six regions. Um, she had three, which were Yoruba land, East Africa, and South and Central Africa. And then moving into actionable pinpointing. So instead of just these broad regions, while it may look nice, it's not actually as easy to do any ancestral research with this information as being able to pinpoint at this level. Here are some more screenshots of some of the African results we've gotten so far. These are from some of our testing samples. So this is really cool stuff. Talk about cool stuff. Okay, guys, let me remove this. I'm just, I don't even know what to tell y'all because um, I, I, I don't know. <laughs> I, I didn't think in this lifetime I would even be able to get this far. And I'm just, and I'm telling you that this is far. This is really far. I mean, three years ago, I didn't know what part of Africa I came from. <laughs> you know, um, and now, oh no, maybe four years ago, I did start testing. But but now we are now able to go to a point where we could figure out what tribe and even connect us with people that are on the continent throughout the world, actually. I'm just, I'm just at awe. And I'm just so, I don't know about y'all. I, I okay, just to stop talking about that for a minute. I, it's going to make sense when I tell you what I'm thinking. I watched that movie with Will Smith. Anybody know what that movie's name is? Put it in the comment section because right now I'm running a blank. But I watched that movie with Will Smith and 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 I was thinking, had me thinking about slave movies and I don't really watch slave movies because it, it, it does something to me. Well, I watched it and um, it, it had me thinking about how, how our names, yes, emancipation, thank you. <laughs> It had it had me thinking about how how our names and um, identity was taken from us and how everything was a fight. Everything that we have gotten back was a fight. There was nothing just said, you know, just uh, handed to us. Nothing was just handed to us saying, "Hey, here's your stuff back." Nothing. And this too itself is a fight. It's a fight because. To be honest with you, now I see it's more of a spiritual fight because now we're fighting to keep an identity that we, we've um, embraced and um, identity that our forefathers, you know, em embraced because they had no other option. And so for me, it was funny because while I was sitting there watching that and then I went into my iPad and just just went through what I had just found out on living on living DNA. And I was thinking you know, how hard it is, how, how really hard it is to really wrap my head around that. These were these, those, those were those people and those people that were fighting at one point to try to keep their identity. And now we, as their descendants have the opportunity, I'm not saying to take it in, but to, 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 to return, to take back what was taken from us. Now that's some real reparation. I, I, that's some reparation that we may have to give ourselves. I don't think, and it would be great if, you know, if leaders from all kind, all, all over the world would come together and decide, hey, these people were stripped of their reality because that's really what happened. And we owe them that back because this is not a small thing. This is a big thing. I mean, to be, to be displaced and to be, to be totally just, just stripped of all of who you are. And, it, and it's funny because I realize now that this that was done to us wasn't just done to us, the ones that were taken off the continent. Of course, it was done to the people on the continent as well because they themselves, um, you know, cultivated a, a thing of a detachment from, from what the reality of what happened to those people. Now, <laughs> There's a lot of ins and outs to, to, in it, and I'm and I'm sure that you know we have people that say, "Hey, you know they play." Yes, everybody. I, I agree with I agree with all of that, and um, 
It's just that I'm at a point right now where I just want to know what was taken from me. I want to, I want to know. I can't, may not be able to do much with it, but knowledge is power. And what I may be, what I may have not been able to do something with my children may, or their children or their children's children, you never know. So um, I'm not going to make you guys wait too long. <laughs> Let's get into my stuff, y'all. Let's get into my stuff. So I am so excited to share this with you guys. And it's been a couple of days because I've been really, I've just been really trying to get it taken in myself. There's so many, so many things that I need to learn about these people. And, um, you know, how many, how many years? Put it in the comment section. Some people say 300 and something. Some people say 400 years ago, our people were taken from the continent. Um, so we've had quite a few great, great grandparents. I mean, we've had at least 200. I mean, we, we got to think of it that way in all those different people, <laughs> man, we, we are Africa encom encompassed within ourselves. I mean, you know how they talk about Africa having is not a country, but a continent. We are a continent within ourselves based on how many different, um, you know, ethnicities or race or or, or culture of different people that are within. Well, let me stop talking and share with you what I'm talking about. <laughs> okay, guys, let me know when you put a one in the comment section if you could see the screen. <laughs> and you know what? Come on here. Come on here. Let's talk to me about this. I want. I want some. I need some continentals to help me understand what I'm looking at. Some of this is a is a little different. I'm not sure what it is, but let's let's scroll all the way up. So when you go to their site. This is what you're, you're going to, well, this is the dashboard. Once you finish taking, you know, submitting your DNA and I just uploaded my DNA from um, Ancestry because I already had that. And they do have a $25 fee for once you do that. So they'll, you know, once you pay that $25, I think it came back in like three or four hours, which was the bomb. So you get this and it, and it, and it gives you the option to read th through all of this. And of course it has other options, you know, like all the others, you know, well-being, uh, you know, <laughs> they even offer you vitamins based on your DNA, which is kind of hype. Okay. But this is the stuff that we've been waiting for y'all. This is the stuff that we've been waiting for. So um, that being said, your recent ancestry ancestry results. And when I saw, when I when I was looking at it, I was like, okay, so I'm 78% West African. And it's funny because most DNA replaced most of the uh, most of the uh, sites put me at 70 something, 77, 78. But then now I understand it's because they're not calculating all the regions. This company has 72 regions. Okay, so look at this. Based on this, it's giving me 90 90% 90.1% 90 Africa. Now, with that, we got the Yoruba, <laughs> which I am familiar with having the Yoruba because that's come up before. And um I I, I actually typed them all here. So the first one is and I didn't put them in order like I should have. <laughs> Yoruba. So we got the Yoruba. And then we have Ghana, Ivory Coast Ghana, I believe, right? Which is, I'm starting to realize that Ivory Coast Ghana, so they share the same genetics maybe because everywhere, all through throughout the different DNA sites, I'm seeing that they are all connected. So Ivory Coast and Ghana, and I was really excited. So it looks like I didn't notate that one. <laughs> Sorry, shout out to my uh, Ghanaians. Uh, so, I, so with the Yoruba, again, 35.2%. Ivory Coast in Ghana came up to 12.1%. And then it gave me the Akan. I don't know why it didn't give me a try for Ivory Coast in Ghana. Maybe they, like she said, they're still testing in those particular regions. And she don't, they're, they're like, we don't want to give you information. If we can't, if they're not going to, they said, if it's not 95% accurate, then they just leave it out until the next update, which I'm excited about. So with with um, with this one right here, if you click on it, let me not move too fast so you guys could see. If you click on it, it gives you detail about Yoruba, you know, and, and the history, which I found really cool. I mean, just really great stuff. And it also gives you citations of where you can go do the research based on what they are telling you up here. So that's on the Yoruba. And you'll find that with all of them. Like if you click on Ivory Coast in Ghana, it'll tell you 
And again, the reason it didn't give a tribe for Ivory Coast and Ghana is because they say they're not at 99, 95% accuracy with it. And unless it's at 95%, they will not give you the tribe name until they have it, which they say they do send updates. So a con would be next. I don't know much about these tribes, guys. I'm still learning. But um, again, you get the you get the information. Oh my God, I thought this was just beautiful the way they have it set up. There's so much to learn. And we have the Benin I, I promise you, um, when I first saw this, I just, and, I saw, and I've had it, of course, for a while, and I just kept, I had to go to each one to try to try to figure out. Now, how do you pronounce this? I don't know. Is it Bam Bamum people of Cameroon? So uh, shout out to Jude, my Cameroonian brother. Here I am. Here I am. <laughs> Can't say, you know, you know, you got to give me what's mine now. You got to give me what's mine now. Okay, so uh, <laughs> so the ba Bamun people, I don't know uh, much about them. Again, I'm still researching. I find it all just fascinating. Um, so there it is. Uh, and ah! okay, so after that came the Bambara people. Bambara people, and they are located in Niger region of Mali. Now, this all lines up with, it's funny because seeing the tribes like this, I mean, you it, it's funny because Ancestry with 23andMe, they give you this, the countries, but they don't really break down the tribes as much. And for them to be able to, to do this, this is amazing. So, <laughs> so uh, yeah, this would be, this would encompass Mali, East of Guinea, um, yeah. Just, just amazing. So um, let me go back to that. Again, I'm still learning and I'm probably not. Shout out to all of my tribes. If I'm mispronouncing this, please forgive me. Um, the Casina people. And when I think about this, I'm like, my gosh. So these were all different humans that were trans transported across the uh, ocean, um, you know, via the transatlantic slave trade and end up becoming me. <laughs> They're all me. I'm like the kind, you know. I'm, you know, like I said, um, yeah, all within me. So uh, the Casina people of Western Africa traditionally Casina society grouped into chiefdoms. Okay, so I was trying to figure out where, but um, yeah, this is this is just amazing, and and you get a, a lot of the culture, and then and then if you click into the sightings, it leads you into like really more more detail than what you're getting right here, which which is amazing, which is amazing. So um, the next one is, is Mendika. Well, I didn't realize that the Mende people and the Mendika people are related. They are <laughs> something I didn't know. Okay, so um, yeah. And I know that that's affiliated with, uh, with for me, on the other sites, it told me that's affiliated with my Gambia and my Sierra Leone, the Mende, so, or Mendinka, which is uh, basically the same as far as they're saying. They're saying genetically they're the same when I looked at some of the sightings. And that was just West Africa. So West Africa, again, Yoruba, Ivory Coast, Ghana, Akan people, Benin. Bamam people, <laughs> Bambora, Casina, and Mendika. And now we got to go into South Central Africa. Now I'm gonna need some help with this. I, I promise you, I don't. I don't think I'm pronouncing any of any of this other than the southeastern Bantu. I don't. And it's and keep in mind, guys, the smaller the percentage, the older the answer. Like this would mean like maybe eight or 10 generations or 20 generations back. And, you know, cause this goes, this, the smaller the, the percentage, that means the older, cause you know, okay. You inherit 50% from each parent. So from each grandparent, 25%, great grandparent, you know, it gets smaller as, as time. So when you see um, that you have a low percentage of something, that means it, it, it happened maybe five or six generations, seven generations ago. So, the South and Central, South and Central Africa, Mumbushku, well, I know I mispronounced, Mumbukushu people, uh, 2.3 2, 2 um, percentage, Southeastern Bantu. Now, 
you know, Makush for people. I just want to make sure there's so much to learn, y'all. I'm just like, it's overwhelming. Even though I look this stuff up, I'm looking at it again and I'm like, so bad. So this would be Bots Botswana, Angola. Where's my Angolian brother? Okay, Namibia, Zambia. These people are all genetically the same. And this goes back to my, you know, all this, we're different people. No, you're the genetically the same and DNA is proving it. Okay, so that's the, Mom again, the Mamkushu people, um, the Southeastern Bantu. I know that uh, I, that always comes up for, for me, the Bantu people. Southeastern Bantu would be, uh, what is that? Where's the Southeast part, y'all? <laughs> okay, I see it. I'm looking at it on the map. So that would be, hmm, would that be South Africa? All of that area? This is just so much. It's just so much. And I'm, and I'm overwhelmed, to be honest with you. I never thought in my lifetime that we would be getting this much information about ourselves. I, I never thought of that. The Amahusha people, are those the people that talk with the tick? <laughs> I know that I saw one and I did the research on it and it was the folks that, that speak with the tick. Um, I thought I thought it was amazing. And um, I'm, I'm still trying to, uh, man, this is overwhelming. And these are some of my smallest regions, y'all. So this is some good stuff. This is some good stuff. Cape region. <laughs> Okay, so let's go back. And then it goes into East Africa. So not only did it give me West Africa breakdown, my South Central Africa breakdown, and it goes down to my East African breakdown. And what I'm learning here is if I could look at this properly, it means like, and it's funny because they say that the slaves were taken from West Africa. Well, this Kenyan that's coming up in my DNA is a very small percentage, and so are the South Central Africa. Um, very small percentages, and it just shows you the migration, how we moved from one part of Africa to another, or or how some of our people moved uh, from parts of Africa to different parts of Africa and ended up in West Africa where they were um, taken um, for the most part. Okay, so the Luya people uh, in East Africa, and that's, that has come up before. That is one of the options that came up with, um, with um, another place that I took a site. And then Kenya Bantu. I didn't even know Kenya had its own Bantu. I guess the Bantu expansion, there's Bantus everywhere. So this would be, uh, that's, that's my connection, y'all. The Lua and the Kenya Bantu. Okay, so you also get your, um, you know, your 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 um, European results as well. I don't really know. Um, so it's eight point six percent, Northwest England, Ireland, South England, South East England, South Central England. I found this interesting, y'all, and it, it and it spoke to me because I uploaded from twenty from Ancestry and from Ancestry, it gives you different countries, but. This site is telling you they're all British and Irish. <laughs> I don't understand. Maybe it's because they are all connected in that way. And, and I, I just need to do more research on that. I was try, trying to try to figure out why the European is lumped up, up, lumped in like that. And it's all in England. Very interesting. But um, of, of course, Bass, that always comes up for me. And I know a little history about the Bass being in Haiti, and especially in the part where my mother was, that they had sent, um, I don't know who the king was at that time, they had sent all these Bass people to Haiti um, to basically, you know, rule over the slaves. And that's what they had done with Ireland and with Poland. Um, a lot of these people were basically forced out of their territory they took their land and then they forced them to go to the Caribbeans and um, offered them land, sometimes forced, sometimes um, gave them the option to have land or whatever. And that's what I found out about the Bass, that the Bass, Bass bloodline that is in me. Um, yeah, that was a part of a, a forced move from, um, from, from, those, from that area. 
um, in, in, in France. So uh, for me, uh, this this right here, I don't know if you guys are paying attention, but this is this is something that that is not small. It's not a small thing for us. And if you have children, if you have relatives and it's important to you to give them more than what you came in this world with. This is a big part of it. This is a knowing that this is something that this is something that was taken from us. And when we talk about reparations for real, real talk, when we talk about all the things that have been taken from us as a people, a big part of that was our understanding of ourselves, our history, our blood bloodline, like Mr. Franklin is saying, hey, sir, <laughs> thank you for coming to me. Uh, coming to uh to to visit me today but yes our bloodline our our connection with our people our collection with ourselves our understanding and um just just being able to tr to to go back and see who are these people that make up me you know who are these people that are now me and why 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 do i look like th these people over here or these people over there and you know why why is it that when these people see me they say hey, you look like you come from this country you know and it's and it's and it's now starting to make a lot of sense i'm i promise you um this discussion for me is really just one very important one because to be honest with you those of you that are not afraid because I'm going to tell you something. I found out, and I don't know if you know this, DNA has been a thing since the 1800s, y'all. The understanding of DNA, the working of D with DNA, the mechanics of DNA, and they've been, this has been, this has been something that this been, they've been working with since the 1800s. We now have the opportunity to use this option to to gather ourselves together, if you if you know if if you can understand what I'm saying, to 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 really, really dig in and figure out well, who am I? You know, those of you on the continent, don't be surprised if you ever take a DNA test and you upload your stuff and you figure out that what you thought you were, you're not. I'm seeing a lot of that. I'm seeing a lot of people getting their results. There are a few people they find out they 100% Nigerian, but then they who they thought they were in Nigeria, they're not. They're they're another group. So it's real. This stuff is real. The reality is that we have now at the at our fingertips the option to fa basically figure out. Who these people are, these people that were enslaved and chained, drug across the oceans and, and put into, into a space that wasn't theirs, given names that wasn't theirs, forced culture, you know, a culture put on them, um, their reality denied to them. I mean, we've all gotten very comfortable in these shoes that we were forced to, to put on, but let's not forget that they were forced to put on and it's nice that we have them on and we're comfortable with them and they've they've done us you know our our ancestors has brought us this far with them but let's 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 try to reconcile some of their wishes their dreams um i'm talking about the ones that really put in the work the ones that you know um the ones that really lost everything, that they knew they were losing everything. Isn't it great that we can reconcile some of that by just knowing, just knowing. And just, uh, uh, you know, the other day I sat in here with a green candle and um, I lit some frankincense, y'all. And I was just looking. I just took my time to go through the list and to really within myself try to try to connect with that part of me. Cause you see, they were able to pull that list up from my DNA. So that means that within me, within me, and that's how, you know, when the Bible says God is within you, or, you know, you, did I, did I not say that you are gods? I mean, promise you, <laughs> this thing is real. And these, these people, we, we carry them with us. They are with us. They are in us. They, they, they propel us every generation and they don't leave you. And it's funny because, you know, I sat here and I was just meditating on, on all of them. And I was just thinking how I would like to really learn as much as I can about the Yoruba, the, you know, the Khan people, the Benin, the Baham, the, Baham, the Bambara, the Kasina, the Mendinka, and 
the other ones I can't pronounce yet, um, how, you know, how very much, you know, in, how very much excited I am within my being, within my being to be able, and it's, it's, it's like, you know, it's like a, it's like a recognition within yourself to be able to, um, to, to, to be able to look at these people now. Now, when I see someone and they say, oh, I'm a con, it's like I resonate or I can, I'm sitting there and I'm watching their, um, watching their movements, seeing how they do things culturally. I'm trying to figure out what it is that that person missed when they were taken across those oceans. What was it that they were missing? Um, was it the way that, you know, this uh, Mendinka person played the, the Korra? Or was it the way that, you know, uh, this Yoruba, you know, uh, did, did, you know, because they, they're very musical, they're very musically inclined, or, you know, the metalworking, was it, was it that, or, you know, and it's funny, I find myself now, you know, just really paying attention to the differences and appreciating them. At the same time, I'm very much grateful that I am encompassing all of them. I'm encompassing all of them because you see, I thought about tribalism. <laughs> I was sitting there and I'm like, well, I can, I can definitely not be tribal with all this going on inside of me. And then it was, it just hit me, you know, our ancestors were for the most part, everything was stripped from them. But something greater happened to them. Everything was stripped from them. I mean, and, and there's no getting away from that reparations is due. <laughs> I agree with that. But um, I feel like something greater happened to us. Um, and I feel like the fact that they were able to put all those differences aside all of these differences that we're looking at came with different languages, different, different culture, different uh, way of doing things. That's really what culture is. It's a way of doing things. And so they were able to put all those things aside and become different people. And it goes back to they became different people that learned to work together and, and consolidated all that greatness, all those different good, great things that, you know, they were culturally differently. They consolidated and became even greater. I asked myself, you know, is Africa going to ever be able to come to a, a, a time where it's going to be able to consolidate? Well, there, there, there's been there's been, there's been work on that. There, you look at Rwanda, you look at Tanzania. Um, there's been work towards that. And I believe... I. I believe there's more work to be done, but man, the other day I sat down and I was watching this young man in Ghana. Um, and why not? Let me, let me, I don't know. Should I share this now? I guess I can because I saw this and I was just thinking to myself, how amazing, how amazing that it's happening. Our people, it's finally happening. There's uh, and I know it's been happening and it's been happening since the beginning of time. People, people, people are waking up or whatever. But I'm really excited to to hear some of the things I'm hearing at such a measure. Let me share what I um what got me so excited. Okay, so in one minute, I want you to introduce yourself to us. Mention your name and introduce yourself to us and tell us why you are here. Yeah, my, my full name is Said Abdel Latif. Said what? Abdel Latif. Said Abdel Latif. Latif. Yes. Yes, we were born into Islam, so we're given these names. Okay. And at the right time, we will have to abolish all these foreign names and go back to our And go back. So what are you going to talk about today? Uh, I want to talk about uh, religion, how our oppressors are, are using their religion to destroy them. So we talk about where religion actually started. Okay. The Christianity and Islam, their roots, where uh, they come from. And then there's a Kaaba in these two religions too, to keep we black people in servitude, in slavery, till the end of time. And we thank God that um, uh, this is the age of awakening, and more information are popping up. 
Okay, so let's start from Islam. You said your topic is religion is destroying Sorry. Africa. Both Islam and Christianity is idolatry. Yeah, they are idolatry. This is a serious topic. Yes. They said we are God's children. We fear God the most. So they should pass through religion and tell us that Allah abhors spirituality. So we shouldn't dance in the spiritual, spirituality as Muslims. Then through Christianity, can you believe our can you believe this conversation is happening? I mean, I'm just so in awe of how things are moving and man, just yeah. Christian brothers and sisters, that our idols and fetishism and what have you are blasphemous. So we should throw them away. But they are grossly engaged in them. When you go to Arabia, they have, they have entered the covenant with Allah. And they have coerced the whole of Arabia to worship that Allah. This was done by one king, Sam. He fought the other tribe and then composed them into so when you are powerful a powerful king you have legions of army you can transcend other continents and countries conquer them coerce them to worship that idol and you will take the benefit and that is exactly what they did to us so if you look at islam and christianity geographically on the african continent it is a straight line that is dividing Africa into two equal parts. The northern part of Africa being predominantly Muslim and the southern part being predominantly Christian. This is not natural. Because if Islam was to invade Africa, it would have come through the east from Saudi Arabia. And if Christianity, which originates from uh, Italy, Rome, was to invade Africa, it would have come through the north. But it's rather the opposite. So that means this was deliberate. This was a deliberate attempt. So all Muslims, including me in Africa, we are worshiping the Arabian God. And all Christians in Africa are worshiping the European God, who is Jesus. The Arabian God is Allah, and the European God is Jesus. So unless we discover the truth, that's why a lot of people are saying this is the age of awakening. We will ban Islam and Christianity in this country. You said all, you were Muslim. Yes. We should ban your own people. Speaking the truth against your own religion has nothing to do with atheism or evil. Because your religion could be false religion. Or it could be indoctrinated. I'm not going to... Okay, so I'm just... I, I have been not even coming online. I mean, to be honest with you, there's so much happening. I'm just, I'm just like at all with all that's happening and all that's unfolding for us. And as a people, what you just saw for me was a big thing. What is happening with the with science, you know, history, prophecy coming together, unveiling all these things and giving us stuff that was taken from us for me, it is like, I feel like we're watching magic happen and not even noticing it. We're watching some of the most miraculous things. I mean, these things, it took hundreds of years. It took, it took a very long time for these things to be taken from us. Our ancestors held very, as much as they could. It wasn't, it wasn't easy. We, we watched that movie um, and, and you know, remember that scene when um, they kept saying, your name is Toby. And he was like, Kunta Kinte, his name is Toby. And, you know, we laugh. And some of us look at that and we don't understand. But, you know, those of us that are, stand, that are, that are holding, that have names now, when you look at these names like, you know, Smith or Johnson or, or you know, in, in Haiti, it's things like Francois or, or Jean or Pierre. Those names were... Were, were given to us. They, they weren't our names. They were not who we were. That was not our identity. And I know, I'm going to tell you something, guys. It's the worst thing that can happen to a human is to have their identity withheld from them. 
to think you're one person or to think you're you're this and then find out that you're that. Could you imagine? That's the worst thing that can possibly happen to you. And I promise you, I know a lot about that. It's not, it's something that, you know, it explains why we are the way we are. It is, it explains why we, we are not walking in our power in this world. Because, you know, you got to know yourself. You have to know yourself. There's no way for you to, um, for you to be able to, to move through life and not understand who you are. To thine own self be true. You have to know your truth. Your truth is the most is your most powerful tool in anything. I was reading this. Um, um, I don't know if you guys could see it. The Art of War. And <clears throat> that's one of the first things. It's like the first thing is to know yourself. It's not about knowing your knowing your opponent. If you even, even if you, you know, if you have an opponent, you see, once you know yourself, you really don't have an opponent. You you're able to to go into any, any situation, understanding your ability, understanding what's important to you. And we see the other nations, sometimes, you know, you see, you know, other races, they're able to do that. They come into a community. You know, how many of you have seen, and we always use the proverbial Chinese, pull them out the bag, right? They come into the community and they they have, you know, they might live upstairs and they have their little shop downstairs, where at least when I was growing up, that's how it was. Now they've they've made so much money, they don't even have to do that. <laughs> but back in the day, that's what they had to do. But even while they were doing that, they had this sense of, they moved into the community. They had that store at the bottom, you know, with the thick ass windows because they didn't want, you know, <laughs> anyway. But they had a sense of you could see and we, we it was resent, it was resented by us because we felt like, hey, you're in the neighborhood. You're making money. You, you live here and you act like and yeah, they were acting like they know themselves. They were acting like they understand who they are outside of where they are outside of where they may have to be or had to be. And for me, that's powerful. That's the kind of power, identity, your reality and understanding your reality is the most important thing. It's not even, it doesn't matter what other people think of you as long as you know who you are. A lot of us can, um, can definitely go back a couple of generations and say, well, this is who I am based on A, B, or C. How humbling that might have must have been for you as a man or a woman coming off that boat, knowing who you were, understanding the freedom you had or the abilities that you, you had the right to be a mother, the right to be a father, the right to to go out there and 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 make produce and and bring home and the right to be the head of the household, the right to be um, a woman in your home, children to your your parents, your name, your humanness. Your humanity. And, and you know, a lot of people ask me, why do you, why does it matter to you so much? Because it's me taking back my humanity. And um, as someone that understand what it's like in this lifetime to have your identity be impacted, it's really, for me, I truly understand what our ancestors went through because it's not a small thing to come into this world knowing your power and having that taken from you. I would love to be able to, to speak to those people, those people inside of me, those people that were taken, all those tribes that I just shared with you. And, and, and I would love for them to, to, um, to know that it's coming together. What was taken from them 
It's taking time, but it's coming together. I am realizing I am coming to terms. I'm coming to terms with who they were, who I am. The connection is, is, is real. And I'm very grateful because I truly believe what's being brought to us and what is, um, what is happening throughout the world for us. And, and I have to tell you guys this, you know, Emancipation woke me up. <laughs> and it's not that um, I have never watched something like that, but it woke me up to understand um, how, how important it is for us not to forget those things that people went through. And there's a lot of folks that said, I will never watch another slave movie again. Well, that's wrong. That's wrong. You should. Just like everybody else is holding on to their, this happened to me. You need to hold on to this happened to me too, because guess what? That's what, that's what keeps you centered and, and, and helps you to not to um, make the same mistake in trusting folk you shouldn't trust or, or allowing yourself to do things to disable your own self. Because you see, you can't all, like I said, I, I don't blame no one here for what happened to us. Me understanding <laughs> and having a relation with the, with the most high, understand more than anything that everything that's happened has happened because of our disobedience to something greater than us, something, you know, because we wanted to be other people. And it's funny because now that I'm saying this, I'm actually verbalizing it. That's some shit. We wanted more than anything to be other than what we were created to be. And that's exactly what happened to us. We became, we, we, we no longer had the opportunity to be what we were created to be. We became what others thought we should be. Ain't that deep? For me, it's deep because it makes me realize and it coincides with everything else that I see happening, you know, and it's still happening. It's still happening on a political level or on a, you know, structural level. You see it where we're, we're still trying to be others. And this for me is my way of trying to make my way back home. And I'm not talking about just to the continent, I'm talking about internally, you know, to this person, to this reality of who, who was she? Who was this person? Who were these people that, you know, we were so ashamed of for a very long time? Some of you will not admit it. There was a lot, there's a lot of shame there that causes folks to not embrace their past. There's a lot of shame there that tells, that says, well, we're not like them. We're different people now. We're different because we've been cultured and we've, we've, um, we, we're just different. And you know what? We've been different. We were different on the continent, it seems. There was definitely different groups of people and different things were happening. And we were still doing all the things that we did to, uh, to cause the divide. And when, when, when two brothers fight, a stranger comes in and takes the land. But we're not talking about land right now. We're talking about something deeper than land. Man, there are certain things that when you start allowing the truth to happen, there are certain lies that cannot cannot just cannot be taken in anymore. And I understand now why they, or for a time, we were not allowed to read or we were not, because there, there are certain histories, there are certain things that were, would not be possible if we understood who we were. If we understood who we were as a people, there are certain things that would not be able, we would not be able to allow generation after generation. And you saw that, you saw that as soon as we started learning about who we were, what we were, and, and those people in Haiti showed us that, those people in, in America, in the United States showed us that centuries later. And, you know, those people in all those different places showed us that continentals that stood up, you know, 
showed us that every now and then those of us that go out there and we dig and dig and dig and try to figure out who were we? What was it? This cannot be it. This cannot, this package that you're giving me is not what I accept. And once you do not accept the lie, the truth is not far behind because you're going to look for it. You're going to find it. And I promise you that old, that old, that old statement of seek and you shall find that's some real shit. Seeking you shall find is some real stuff, y'all. And it happened to me because I promise you there are certain things that I can't share with you guys yet, but I'm ready. As soon as I can, I will. Because I, I promise you this whole identity thing, it's a deep thing for me. It's a deep thing for me because you see, if you let someone else tell you who you are and you believe them, then power is in their hand. They have power. But if you know who you are within yourself, within yourself, you know who you are, then the power is in you. We've been a very, we've been a powerless people for a very long time, y'all. And I'm not just talking about those of us that were taken off the continent, man, worldwide, very, very, without power. And I'm not even, let's not, let's go beyond us melanated people. The whole world has been without power. There's only a few percentage of people that actually know the truth and they're not even living in that truth. They're living, um, you know, something that they've orchestrated to work for them, if you know what I mean. So we're living in a, in a world that's orchestrated and... <laughs> All power is a mirage until real power comes from within. All external power is fake. And, and, and I'm realizing that. So this was a deep, a little, a, going a little deeper than I wanted to go. I really wanted to share with you guys this is my founding with um, Living DNA. For those of you that have taken DNA tests, that are interested in seeing what I saw um, go, please find a way to, um, to, to, to reconcile within yourself and really find out as much as you can about yourself and then leave it for your children. And make sure, you know, we always talk about, it's funny how I was thinking the other day, I found out that there were a couple of places that had writing systems. Cameroon was one of them. Um, a couple of places in Africa, but they always talk about the fact that, you know, we, we just kept, we, we just, we didn't keep written down. No, that's a damn lie. You know, the history, history teaches us that people would go into places and then they would burn people's books and everything. That's a damn lie. I believe that there were hit, written histories. I believe that we, we, um, we, 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 we were doing things before a lot of folks were doing things and, and it's all starting to come out. And I'm thinking that if people go to that extreme, if folks go to um, that extreme to take away something from you, then it must have been great. So when we think about things that we want back, when we think about being paid or getting restitution for something that was done to us, I'm just going to say this, and I've said it before here on this channel. One of the most important things that we need to receive is our truth. And we need it from everyone. <laughs> and I said this before, and I was just thinking from Africa, from, from, from all the other, you know, the, the colonizers. No, no, we need it from everyone. We need the truth from everyone. But the truth you can't get to it unless you're ready to tell the truth to yourself. And so in this time, are we ready to tell the truth to ourselves? And are we ready to take on, I mean, truly take on the responsibility of making sure that this truth is told to our children? It's something that they may not appreciate today. But I promise you, you leave it for them. And I'm sure 
one day when they get to where you are right now and you're looking and you're trying, and if you already have it there, they're going to be, they're going to be so much grateful. And, and, and I'm, and I'm thinking within myself that it's not even something that we have to force. It's about living it. It's about making it important to you. <laughs> Your DNA has a story to tell. Explore it, live it. Making it important to you. And, and I'm telling you, there, there's, there's no mistakes. There's no mistakes. In science, the creators did not set us up in a way where our body, our cells can, can memorize or keep account. It's a library within us, y'all. Our DNA is like walking into one of the greatest libraries in the world and having all of this information. You know, back in the day when we used to uh, have encyclopedias, those of us that are that old, <laughs> when they used to have those books and you can go and you could just, well, you know, I guess you could, you could, well, let's just, let's just compare it to Google now. It's all there. It's, um, and it's not a mistake. Something greater than all of us, than then all things made sure that whatever happened, we would be able to find those breadcrumbs back home. Now, do you ignore the breadcrumbs and say, hey, I don't, I don't care? <laughs> like I saw somebody in the comment section say earlier, yeah, I saw you, Mr. Rock. <laughs> do you say, I don't care, I don't want to go back? It's not even about going to Africa or, 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 or resonating with Africa. It's about resonating with yourself. It's about figuring out who you are, being strong enough to face that which you are afraid to face. A lot of not wanting to connect with that part of history because it's because you're ashamed of it. A lot of it, and I'm not saying it's all. It's always that way for everyone. But when people put out statements like, I don't have anything I want from there. Well, I'm not saying it stops there. Who says it stops there? That, that might just be the, the, but you have to go back. And that's one of those places that you have to back, back up to. But if you're not willing to go there, then you're never going to go anywhere. You're going to stay right here. Where are you going to go? How are you going to get there if you don't cross that bridge? And that bridge that you don't want to cross, you don't want to cross it because you're ashamed of it or you're afraid of it or you're so comfortable in this space that you were forced to be in that you're afraid. You're just afraid. It's your fear that's stopping you from looking at yourself, seeing your own reality. That could not be me. It's deep. It's real, y'all. But I'm telling you, <laughs> all power outside of you is a mirage. Unless that power is coming from inside of you, it's not yours. And anything that comes from outside of you can be taken from you. But when that power comes from within you, that's yours, man. That's yours to keep. No one can take it from you. No one has access to it but you. And you bring something to the table that no one else can bring. And these are the things that unfolding <laughs> what I unfolded. My 14, I don't even know how many, <laughs> how many regions, y'all. My Yoruba, my Akan, my Ba, I have so many. I don't, I have to go back and learn. Coming to terms with all of it. It's amazing. It's amazing. So I'm, I, 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 I'm, I'm ready. I'm ready to, to, to go deeper. And I'm going to, and I keep telling, and it's funny, I'm, I have to share something with y'all. <laughs> I have this thing where I get up around three o'clock in the morning. I can't, I don't know what it's been happening for a while, but I get up and I, and I usually put, take the dog out. And when I do, 
I just look into the heavens and I'm, I'm not stargazing you. I'm just looking into the heavens, trying to connect with something outside of me that's greater. And lately I've been having this voice. It's inside of you. I'm with you. So for me, there's a, you know, and there's a scripture in the Bible that says, you, that they have not I told you that ye are gods, that, you know, th this power that I've been, that we go out of our way to, to reckon with outside of us. DNA is having me understand something, yo. It's having me, it's, it's bringing me to the realization that there's nothing greater than you. And in this time, this life, it's you, your decision, and how you do things. No one, I don't care what group you in, what camp, what de denomination, what, what uh, you know, whatever you believe, I don't care what you're connected to externally. Nothing, they can do nothing for you. It's all internal. It's all internal. And it is, it is, isn't it strange that we carry a record of who we were hundreds of years ago internally as well? There's no separation from that. Sure, you can open up your mouth and you could say, yeah, I'm, I'm not this, I'm not that. But in the end of the day, your cells, they, they still resonate who you are. And, and this is the thing that I think that I wanted to share with you guys more than anything. Because for me, that has been the biggest lesson throughout all that I've learned. If you look at my channel, there's a lot. I, I've just basically, I'm taking my time going through all the discussions that I've had here. Because to be honest with you, there's been so many lessons. So many great people have come on this channel and had and have shared. And, 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 and there's so much more to be shared, but I'm, I'm telling you that something great is happening for us. And I'm not just saying us as just melanated, because to be honest with you, I, the power within me encompasses the world. <laughs> like, I feel like we were here to, I have so much love and so much um, power within me. I feel that it encompasses the world. And there is nothing greater than us. And I think that if we as a people start seeing ourselves that way and understanding that the only way that we can do that is to go within. I mean, there's nothing you can buy to put on. There's no group of people you could follow. There's no amount of money that can really give you that. There's no harvesting of that outside of yourself. The root is within. And... um. And no one else can water it for you, can fertilize it for you. No one else can harvest the, the fruit for you. It's all you. And, 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 and as a people, we need to understand that as well, as a collective. It's amazing. And, and the, more, the more I realize the power that springs from us. The other day I was talking, okay, I'm going to sidebar this. And I was talking to my husband and he said, how do you know, how, how do we know that Judah is the African-Americans? And I'm probably upset some people right now when I'm about to say this. And I said, because, because the world follows them. I mean, there's certain gifts that we all have. We all have certain gifts and we have to resonate with what gifts. And, and that's another thing to stop. Stop coveting other people's gifts. <laughs> but that's a whole different conversation. We could talk about that later. But there's um when you're when you're good at something, when other people are good at something, especially within your own cipher, be 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 able enough to say it. I was telling him that. And I, and I thought about what I said to him after. I said, you know, from my understanding, and, you know, I go back, like I said, to the 80s and 90s. Um, 
And Masha had a conversation with me once and anybody knows anything about UPK or the Hebrews or Marsha was one of the first elder um, with UPK. Um, he said something to me one in, once and it carried with me. And I find the other day when I was talking to my husband, it resonated. And, I, and when I answered him, I answered him exactly the way Marsha answered me when I asked him a question maybe 25 years ago. He asked me a question and I said to him, when he asked me, well, how do we know that Judah is, is the African-Americans? I said to him, how do we know he's the head tribe? I said, what, what do we, when we think about the head tribal, we think about a head anything. What does that mean? It doesn't mean that he was the strongest fighter or he was the wisest or the most intelligent. It just meant that he led. And, 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 it, and, it, and, it, and it, it made me realize something. And I'm going to share this with you guys. So much of what we do as a people or what we don't accomplish as a people have a lot to do with covening each other. Not, not being able to see the light that you have and appreciate it and understand that I should learn from it and, and not be worried that my light is different. But appreciate your life the light and be able to 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 reflect minds without any guile without any you know any har harnessing any jealousy towards another person and i think we do a lot of that but i think that comes from i think that comes from again being forced to give up ourselves in so many ways but I'm gonna take something back real quick. Before we were forced to give ourselves, we were, we were basically turning away from ourselves, trying to be other people. And that's why we were weak enough to be, to be taken away, to be completely taken away and without power. So if power is something that you're interested in, it's internal. It's not external. And the moment we realize that as a people, and I mean that with, you know, as far as, you know, understanding that these things that are dividing us are, are external things. And if we can go within, there's more to resonate with. I'm not, I'm not sure if I'm believing that Unity is the answer for everyone, but for those of us that want it, and for those of us that understand it, we're living in a good time because guess what? There are so many opportunities. There are so, so much, so many options. We have more options today than our ancestors did 200, 300, 400 years, 400 years ago. We, we are what they've been waiting for, and and, and I'm talking about, you know, all of them. So resonate with who you are internally. Don't shy away from it because you're afraid. Because, you know, you've been in this space for so long and it's so comfortable and you're afraid to look outside of it. I don't want to see myself as anything different than what I am. And, and, and it doesn't mean you have to um, go anywhere or do anything different. It just means that you have to know who you are and you have to keep wanting to know who you are. It's your responsibility. No one else's. And I don't care, like I'm going to say it again, I don't care who you're connected with be it a belief system or anything outside of yourself, even a family structure. I mean, you come to this world by yourself and you're going to leave by yourself. And in this time that you have in this space, in this cipher, you better work on trying to figure out what it is that you are here to do. So if, uh, if this conversation was good for you guys, I'm not going to stay here long because I have to um, work tomorrow. 
But if this discussion resonates, please uh, share it. This is important stuff and take advantage of the Living DNA site, upload your DNA, get your tribes on deck. <laughs> I'm really excited about that. Get your tribes on deck, figure out who these people were, who were they? What, what, and, 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 and look, it's not all of it, y'all. They say they're still updating. They still have some more things they want to clarify, but we're this much closer. We're this, this much closer to getting our facts, you know, getting our facts, our car facts. You know how they say, before you buy that car, get the car facts. Well, yeah, before you close the book and think you know everything, Get the facts about yourself and, 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 and others if you have time, but definitely about yourself and, and make room and make room for change. Make room for you to be able to shift if you need to. It's okay. We, we were given a handful of whatever our ancestors, our parents were given, and they were given a handful of what they were given. Well, it's our responsibility. And if we're blessed, I mean, and I truly believe we are, I believe that this generation is blessed. There's so much, we have so much, so much more than they did, y'all. The other day I found out, and I said this earlier, and I'll reiterate, these people have been knowing about DNA since 1800s, late 1800s. They have had access to our facts since millennia. We lost track of ourselves, you know, had to lose myself so I could love you better. You, hey, you guys know that song from Lauryn Hill? I had to lose myself so I could love you better. That's some real shit. I hope that we can all find ourselves. We did lose ourselves. I hope that we can find ourselves and maybe that can help us love each other better. So I'm gonna share some dopeness. <laughs> I'm about to get out of here. I wanna thank everyone. I wanna tell you guys, I love you. And, um, and I'm doing all that I can to be here with you guys more. Share the channel with y'all. Let's get some more subscribers on here. Um, and um, Share it on your social medias. Get that living DNA. I want you guys to come back and maybe share with me some of your results. I'm really excited about what I have found out. Um, there's no going back. We're going to find out more. We're going to know more about ourselves. Um, and we're gonna, it's our responsibility to, um, to uh, motivate our children into, uh, you know, into what they're going to bring to their children. This is great motivation, y'all. And um, I'm excited and I'm renewed um, and, and, and I'm very much, very much ready uh, for, for whatever else is going to be brought to us. Um, like I said earlier, um, it's really, it's really our responsibility to uh to bring to bring our facts to uh to to reality and whatever we need to do to do so um is what we're going to need to do and um it's really simple now it's really just about doing the research staying on track not getting caught up into the you know the stuff that's happening external to keep us busy focusing on the mission of trying to get the next generation this much this much closer and 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 i think that that's what our ancestors did to leap us out of our situation and yes there was some stall time but i think we're back to work now and i think it's important that we take on that um baton and 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 move forward with it and now from some you know now that i'm about to get off here i'm about to share something dope with you guys it's my new intro and outro i hope you guys like it
fuck the system. Fuck politicians, fuck capitalism. Fuck exploitation, we need rationalism. Fuck nationalism, we need more love and less hate. We need more peace, less war for sure. Less mumble rap, more Tupac Shakur. We need less rappers, more revolutionaries. We need more grace, no more hating. The time is now, no more waiting. We need more God, no more Satan. Politicians won't save you, they just sent here to enslave you. Your pastor won't save you, they just use God to enslave you. The police won't save you, you better buy your gun before your time is done. There's no time to run. One minute you having fun, the next your time is done. I pray facing the sun. I need some light in my life. I need some Christ in my life. Please come and light in my life. I dream the jewelry and ice, but for the price of sacrifice, would you roll the dice? Politicians won't save you, they just sent here to enslave you. Your pastor won't save you, they just use guards to enslave you. The police won't save you, you better buy a gun before your time is done. There's no time to run, no time to run. Divine Mother is the goddess, the divine provider, divine father protectors, the masculine rider. The true wealth is not in no jewelry and Prada. The secret to happiness is already inside us. Don't trust this wicked government. Politicians are liars. The government exists for taxes and spying on you. If they ain't lying to you, they probably lying on you. Sam, you tried to warn you, but you wanted a king. The system of capitalism ain't everything it seems. A human nightmare, a white man's dreams. Will aliens intervene if they start nuclear war? Do they live inside the earth? I ain't really sure if there are aliens. The government knows. I know there's really a God. May he cover our souls. May I conquer my foes and all that oppose. Black as the pit, my unconquerable soul, my unconquerable soul. Politicians won't save you, they just sent here to enslave you. Your pastor won't save you, they just use God to enslave you. The police won't save you, you better buy a gun before your time is done. There's no time to run, no time to run.